Muses of Mythology is a spoiler-heavy podcast. That's an understatement. We're going to discuss not just the events of this book, but the Rydenverse as a whole, and really anything that we feel is relevant. You can find full spoiler warnings in the show notes. Occurring to me that that a lot of Taco, you're being a menace. <laughs> Welcome to Muse and Mythology, a podcast where we explore how ancient myths become part of modern pop culture through the lens of Rick Riordan's Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. This is Story 91, Jotunheim. I'm your co-host and podcasting muse, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, DJ. How's everybody doing today? I'm DJ the Muse, and I'm tired. Had a busy day today. Did a lot. What'd you do today, DJ? I went to my ADD clinic and I worked out. Oh, hey, good job! Busy Big day. day for me. Busy day for DJ. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Let's let's muse about it in the garden for a moment. Yes. DJ, I went to a gala. Wonderful. It, it was very fun. Nice. They had a great a, a great spread of food, like a fancy <laughs> charcuterie spread with kebabs. Oh, nice. It was excellent. It was in a nice hotel downtown, and it was a gala hosted by Pride Foundation. Ooh. They they hosted a fundraising gala specifically to, I mean, raise money for the foundation. So Pride Foundation was founded in 1985 and is dedicated to building a better, safer, and more equitable world for LGBTQ plus people and our families in the Northwest. The work is guided by the fundamental belief that every person should be able to live openly, safely, and genuinely in all the communities they call home. Wonderful. Yeah, very good stuff. And dear listener, you may be like... Why, why was Darren going to a gay thing in September? Well, I'll tell you, dear listeners, because as my mug I bought this year in the month of June from <laughs> Kohl's says, I am in fact queer all year. <laughs> now, you can't see this. I'm holding up the mug. I really like yeah, this mug. It's a great mug. Um, but also, uh, September is actually Pride Month in our city of Boise. Wild. Since, since pandemic, the Pride festival got moved from june to september that year Mm -hmm. and then it's just been held in september so i got to go to the first wasn't there one in june this year though i mean pride is in june there was one in canyon county oh okay yeah they had they had their very first pride but boise boise specifically boise and boise has events like you'll have events in june but the pride fest is in september so uh, i attended this gala it was very good and uh, I found out one of the chair members, because they, they, the foundation has members in, it's all the Northwest. Yeah, yeah. One of the chairs for Idaho was the one person who attended the Muses panel at Boise Comic Arts Fest last year. That's Through that awesome. one gal, <laughs> yeah. Jeff and Green, and we were like, do y'all want to hear this? And she was like, yeah, I, I do, actually. So we did the whole thing just for her. That's really cool. Shout out to Laura. That's she a lot of fun. She recognized me. She was like trying to figure out how she knew me. She's like, well, I guess she's just friends with Kelsey. Nope. She's like, I remember you. You were at the library con panel about Laura Olympus. And I'm like, oh, my God, you were the Holy one person shit. who came. Thank you. So um, on that, I was like, definitely going to give him money. And I went ahead. I'm like, I'm going to donate. This is going to be the monthly uh, donation. Monthly donation. So, dear listeners, you should probably know by now, but if it's your first episode and you're listening to the uh, Muse Around the Garden, hey, thanks for listening. Appreciate I know it. for a fact most of y'all don't listen. <laughs> I know on good money most of y'all don't listen. and Because I don't. Fine. I don't. <laughs> I don't listen to these parts on any podcast. You can. Make... I don't either. I mean, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, oh, 15. 15, I got 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah. 30. <laughs> um, but so every month we donate $1 for every patron we have over on Patreon to some organization doing a net positive in the world. This month, mm. it's going to be Pride Foundation. Uh, we currently have nine patrons over on Patreon. So I donated money out of pocket, raising that donation to $50. There you go. Listen, I was a little tipsy and they fed me good meat and cheeses. So I was Hey, I generous. gave my waiter at Barbacoa on Sunday at $20 because he gave me a free drink. So. <laughs> good. Absolutely. That is exactly what you should do, DJ. Well done. So uh, if you want to learn more about Pride Foundation, there will be a link in the show notes. Thank you so much to all of our patrons who helped make these donations possible. We appreciate you guys so much. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be one of those wonderful patrons, go ahead and go to patreon.com forward slash Muses Mythology. You better believe it. We got a ton of content over there. It's so wonderful. We have as much 
bonus episodes as we do real episodes. So that's twice real the content episodes. right out the get right out the gate. Imaginary episodes versus yeah. real episodes. Bonus versus real. Come on. Main feed. Come on. It's like GT. It's not canon. Okay. <laughs> that's that's true. The, <laughs> the stuff on Patreon is non-canon. <laughs> yep. And then we even have remith episodes that we do once a month. We've been a little lacking on it, but Don't you know. Tell them that. And we'll be doing every, every year. We do a muses. 12 days of musemus. Every year we do that. It's wonderful. We talk about we talk about Charles Dickens a Christmas carol and all of its iterations. <laughs> all of them. There's so many, so many. And we do it for 12 days in a row, so 12 different I'm episodes. I'm worried we did all the good ones up front. Oh, we, we absolutely it. did. We, it's we it's going to be some it's going to be some stinkers this year. I'll there, tell you what. There's but There's a Mega Man game? <laughs> it's a Mega Man fan game. Let's do the Mega Man fan we'll game. see. We got to get out of here. Yep. All right, now back to the show. See you. Darren, I'm leading this one. Oh, thank God. I didn't do any <laughs> research. <laughs> I'm leading this one. Uh, we are talking about Jotunheim. Mm-hmm. Y'all, you know how that episode I kicked back twice? Pff, I didn't want to do it so bad. I just didn't research it. DJ had to no. sweep in and save the day. Not, And this is not just because I found out I'm actually going out of town to an out-of-state wedding this weekend. Really hate to see it. So you thanks. didn't find it out. You opted in and then you delayed. <laughs> I opted in. And then got the weekends confused. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that. But we are going, yeah, we're going to be talking about Jotunheim. Yes. And as with all Norse things, boy, howdy, there's really not a lot. Not a lot, huh? You know, there's a lot to do with Thor. Mm-hmm. I hear that. And that's almost exclusively all that Jotunheim is involved in. Interesting. Jotunheim is referenced a few times when it comes to, like, characters, and I didn't Write those characters down. Okay. I did forget to write those characters out because most of the time it's like a daughter born of Jotunheim. Uh, yes. This person of Jotunheim. There, there does. I did in, in previous episodes and during research. There seems to be a lot of. I pulled up a PDF. Daughters of con- giantesses. Yeah, oh, you controlled, found a PDF? I found a PDF. Controlled F Jotunheim. It showed up 19 times. <laughs> In, in both of them. <laughs> in, in the edits, that is that is how I do the edits. I've never thought of getting a PDF and control Fing to figure out exactly how many times something is mentioned. Um, yeah. But that's so good. And I almost want to go back and be like, and how many times is hell mentioned? And yeah. how many times is exactly, it actually right. mentioned? Exactly, right. <laughs> how many times is uh, it actually mentioned? I couldn't find the exact translations that you had. Uh, I could find. I found a PDF, but it didn't let me control F things in it. Mm. It was just like an actual picture. Yeah. Of the books. I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. But yeah, I, I clicked through them and it really was just this person of Jotunheim mm-hmm. or Jotunheim cries during, or all of Jotunheim cries out during Ragnarok or just some like oh, stuff like that. Right? That's a cool passage. Yeah. But as I said, Thor goes to Jotunheim. A lot. A lot. In mm-hmm. fact, it seems that he just kind of patrols Jotunheim. <laughs> Interesting. He just goes through it. I mean, he has like certain quests every now and again, but for the most part, it really does seem like he walks around Jotunheim and then interacts with people. Interesting. I I have a question about Jotunheim. What is it? It's, you know, for the most part, it seems to be like an actual place. Yeah. uh, In Norway. Fun fact, there's a mountain range called Jotunheim in Norway. Uh It's a very beautiful little valley. Uh, But... Is it... Called Jotunheim because of the Eddas, or does that name predate the popularity? I imagine because of the Eddas, because all the... Tra- I mean, I didn't look into that. Uh, the translation, another translation I found, called it the Giant Land. Actually, it's this one here. It calls it the Giant Land. Oh, the the one we've got? Yeah. Oh. It says Giant Land instead of the prose uh, Edda or the Poetic Edda? Whichever one Snorri wrote. Uh, Snorri wrote the prose Edda. Great. Hey, DJ, yeah. huh. I'm not trying to test you. I'm really not. I, this no, you're fine. To, Go ahead. Um, I feel like at this point in this run of episodes, you should know which one Snorri wrote. You know. <laughs> the problem is, okay. is when you described them originally and when you said like, yeah, Snorri wrote this because he wanted people to be able to. Uh, write in the style of poetry of this. Yes. And that my brain immediately clicked poetic edda. Okay. No. And so it's been very difficult to unlink that. (laughs) And so it's like, I kind of know, I know like logically it's not the poetic edda, but it's also then it's like when you're just kind of like talking and verbal vomiting sometimes, you'll 
won't catch it and then you'll try to stop yourself and be like which one was it again no that's fair that is no that's okay that's totally fair you're right i did say that and i do say that a lot so of course if you're not the ones holding these goddamn books every week it's like and which no no poems but not the poet but he did do the and that's that's true it's the one with he wants to teach people to write in this style of poetry but it's not the poetic edit it's the prose edit that he wrote yes he didn't write the poetic edit is the poet poetry of it yeah hey hey hold on did snorri write any poetry i mean in the edit in the prose edit you wrote it or you read it (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but it's I just read. I just no. read the Utgard Loki pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm excited to hear about that. I'm just, I'm just. It, it's, uh, it's occurring to me. There are a lot of the prose edit is Snorri writing down these stories, so you learn them. Yeah, and then he'll cite little verses from poems, and we'll know what the poems are from. But yeah. sometimes he'll just have a verse. I wonder what the scholarship is on whether or not those verses that we don't have from anywhere else are like from Snorri. That's not a groundbreaking theory. Surely that's something. But I, no, I'm, I'm so, sure somebody thought of it. I'd be but. so interested to know what the consensus is on like we. These are like poems, and they're not cited, so we don't have the source anymore. And it's like, was Snorri the source? Was this him? Being did like, he write these, or did he read these, transcribe them, talk about them? Yeah, and then write another sort of passage. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, moving on. Moving on. So Jotunheim, it's one of the realms, land of the giants. Land of the giants. Is uh, it Thor does cool? in. It's not, I couldn't find a spec like an actual description of Jotunheim. Yeah. Again, all 19 of those references that mm-hmm. I clicked through, none of them was like a description of this land. Yeah. Okay. Because that's. And maybe there is a point in time where they describe Jotunheim without using the word Jotunheim as mm-hmm. like the land of giants. And maybe I should have searched up land of giants or giant land or something like that. Because they're also but... called frost giants. Or is that a Marvel thing? That's a Marvel thing, actually. Is it? Okay, okay. Marvel, <laughs> everything. The weird thing is, like, Jotunheim, I do think, like, I have the feeling that it's cold. And again, that's probably because of Magnus Chase. Yeah. And I'm sure other things. And probably, maybe even Marvel, because they do call it Jotunheim. They call it Jotunheim, and it's where yeah. the frost giants live. But. I can't find much of it. I could. F- I know it's cold, but it's also foresty, right? Yeah, it's woods. And I wouldn't consider Marvels to be woodsy. No, it's just like that, a dead that ice was planet. Definitely Niflheim that they were trying to do. And that's what I was wondering too. Is it just getting conflated with Niflheim? I think it gets conflated with Niflheim a lot because they're both cold. They both have giants, right? Yeah. So I think it just gets conflated a lot. I did. See that Scotty resides in Jotunheim? Yes. Which I thought she was in... I thought they had wound up in a Niflheim in the Ship of the Dead. That's... Okay, that's what I was trying to remember, too. She... Because she is in... She's the giant, and she's associated with skiing. And this was actually yeah. one thing that I did. I actually have it's a... Uh, oh, yeah. Do you want to talk about Scotty? Thrymheim. Yep. Thrymheim. So Scotty is a giant. Mm-hmm. Obviously a giantess. I have it. I, I even read it. I read this. She helped overthrow the person who was like in charge of Thrymheim, mm-hmm. or no? Damn it! I should have written down names, a little more names. In Jotunheim, there's a couple of key locations. Okay. One of them is Thrymheim, the castle that we see Scotty at. Right? Yeah, it's the Thun. No, not Thunder Castle. Thunder Castle, yeah. It is Thunder Castle. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I keep thinking uh, Thor's house is Thunder Castle. <laughs> you understand. Yeah. No, it is Thunder Castle. And the leader of, not the leader, the head of that castle, let me find his name real quick. I think it's Thiazi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the leader of that was Thiazi, and that is Scott, Scotty's father. Thiazi oh. kidnaps uh, Idun, who has the golden apples. Oh, okay. Uh, in order to, well, get a golden apple from her. Yeah. And all the Aesir gods are like, that's fucked up. We need those to be immortal. Uh, Thor, go over there, fix it. Thor, go fix it. Wait, okay, hold on, hold on. The... Not what this episode is about. Gotta no. circle back. The Aesir have golden apples that make them immortal? I keep them youthful, at least. Okay. Well, so maybe they don't. Day. So maybe they don't keep them immortal. Maybe they can just live forever, but they just become old. 
Okay. And they don't like being old. Oh, well, yeah, it's rough. You know, I would appreciate... I want to make sure that it is Thor who went and rescued her. Edun's the wife of Braggy. Not what this oh. episode's about, but... No, he's a poetry guy. Yeah. No, this was... Loki who brought her back. Yes, because I talked about that in the Freya episode because he borrows Freya's feather cloak yeah. to go get her back. Yes. Because once upon a time, back. Loki was friends with everybody. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> he... It feels like something happened, right? Like something had to have happened. Yeah, Loki was just suddenly kind of a dick. But also, also speaking from personal experience, maybe something was brewing the whole time. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe his insults just got a little too personal that one time and like, bro, that wasn't cool. And then he wasn't sorry about it. Yeah. Just not apologetic about overstepping that boundary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that would deteriorate. You'd be like, okay, no, I see what you're really like now. Thiazi went to go recapture Edun and he died. By how? He got murked. Let's see here. He got murked. So he was chasing after Loki. Okay. And the uh, the Asir gods all built like this big fire pyre. Okay. Uh, and right as Loki was like running away, heading towards this, he flew up away from the pyre. Uh-huh. And as Thiazi was chasing him, he couldn't stop in time and he ran right into it and died. That is some Road Runner Wily Coyote shit. Yeah, actually, it's really Maybe. funny. Anyway, Scotty inherits it after him, and then Scotty obviously gets her Norn stuff. Yeah, so Scotty, Scotty, wait, is this why she's allowed to pick a god to marry? Is it like, yeah, so we did kill your dad, so to make good, we're going to give you a husband? I'm double checking. Because that feels like in line with the whole, you know, blood oath legality agreement. Yeah, that's actually it. Oh, really? Yep. Hey! Fiazi dies, and Scotty's like, I'm going to go to war with you guys. And they're like, wait, hold on. We'll let you marry a god. We'll let you pick whichever one you want. Political please. marriage, but you got to do it based on feet. You know what? And maybe is that why the divorce is so amicable? Because it was just a political marriage for the jump? Yeah, pretty much. And she's like, and I don't like, want- I just don't want to live by the sea. And it's like, I don't want to live in your fucking mountain. It sucks. All, like, all okay. of this sucks. Yeah, okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I love- I'm a big fan of Scotty, I think. I think uh, I really I, like her. Uh, Scotty's great. She's a lot of fun and- uh, I'm Smite. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, a lot of fun. I don't know why I got jump scared. I just got jump scared by Smite in my own goddamn <laughs> podcast. She, uh, she's got Calder with her in Smite. She can summon the dog. That's very good. Yep. I'm a big... I actually really dig Scotty and Yorn's kind of wistful will they, won't they in the books. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like... Because it's like Norn's like... Scotty was a bit of a firecracker, but her castle just kind of sucked. And Norn's like, or Scotty's like, Norn was a really cool dude and he had beautiful feet, mm -hmm. but his fucking sea castle sucked. <laughs> yeah. I also, he, uh, I think he still sends her flowers. I think so. I think that was like, the case. And she, I think she's like, oh, it's so annoying. But I think it is, she's like very touched by the fact yeah. that. It's really fun. The thing about that is that I don't think that, we keep saying they got divorced. I don't the word divorce is ever actually said. They just don't live together. No, they they just they just yeah they broke up. They they just broke up. They never yeah. say divorce, but I think that could also be. Also, they just maybe just don't live together. It's yeah. a very modern yeah. right. It's a very yeah, right. modern yeah. arrangement. They're still married. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'd have I would we would have to do a deep dive into the social norms of the Nordic people. Absolutely. To, to under I think it's probably an amicable divorce is what we're meant to read into here. But <laughs> I think a retelling in which they're still married but just don't live together would also be totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. That's it for Thrymheim. That's it that I got for Thrymheim specifically. Next, mm -hmm. we actually have Mimir's Well is in Jotunheim. I'm sorry. It's in Jotunheim? It's in Jotunheim. Mimir's Well? Mimir's Well is in Jotunheim. That seems like the wrong spot for it. Go on. It's beneath one of the roots, and specifically the root that passes, the root of Yggdrasil. Yeah. And specifically the root that passes through Jotunheim. It's oh, beneath there. Okay. Yeah, right? Also, the location for Jotunheim is actually on the same level as Midgard when it comes to the world tree. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's why Thor has to keep the giants out of Midgard. Yes. And I, I can't... There's a third one. There's three on each 
level. There's three below Midgard, two with Midgard, you know, three yeah, including yeah. Midgard, and three above Midgard. And above Midgard, I believe it was... Asgard. Asgard, Alfheim, and I want to say... I think Vanaheim might be with... Vanaheim would make the most sense, I think. With Midgard. Oh. I can't remember. Okay. Hate to see it. Hate uh, to see it. But regardless, yep, there's, I, wherever, if somebody can find it, send it to us. Yep, Somehow. let us know. Refresher. Let us know in our Discord if you're on our Patreon, on X if you, you know, follow us. Follow DG for his breakfast adventures. Yep. Or Instagram if you follow us there. Follow us there for Darian's lip sync videos. Absolutely. But Mimir's well, uh, and it's obviously the one that Odin goes to, talks to Mimir, is like, hey, I want some wisdom. Uh-huh. It's like, you'll have to pay a price. Odin plucks out his eye and gives it to him, and then he can drink from his well. <laughs> okay, we're going to dive into that in the Odin episode. Absolutely. We're going to really unpack that, because what the fuck? Yeah, that's when the Odin episode comes, when... Everyone, again, Jotunheim seems to be the location people go to do a quest and then go home. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's just because Midgard is what we talked about in the last episode. That is essentially civilization. That is the boundaries of your known world. Yeah. So if you want to go on a quest, you go on an adventure, you go into the unknown where maybe there are giants about. Maybe there's a well where you can gain knowledge. Like this is... Not your home, so it's in Jotunheim. Yeah. Because hell is where the dead go. Muspelheim's too hot. And Asgard and Vanaheim are for the gods. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, then you also have, so there are four named locations. I've already given you two. Thrymheim. Uh Uh-huh. And Mimir as well, right? That has a name. I can actually pull that up. Mimir's Brunir. I'm sorry, say that one more time. Mimis Brunir? Jizuntag. Mimis Brunir. Okay. Yeah. That's the Norse word for Mimir as well. Oh. Then you have another named location. Okay. A lot of named location. Yeah. Uh, it's called Vimir, the Vimir River. Okay. Thor has to cross it on his quest. I don't remember exactly. I think he's just, I think he's, again, I think, I'm pretty sure Thor just patrols Jotunheim. Yeah, just walks around and makes sure... No one's up to any shenanigans? Mm, pretty much. And so he's crossing the Vimir River, and as he's doing so, a giant named Galp... Great name. ...pisses into the river to try to wash him away. Oh, that's on purpose! This is, this, okay. is, this is a plan. She is she is doing this. Oh, she... she. The, this completely, completely changes. changes everything I was picturing. Wow. Yeah. Ah, Norse mythology uh, He great. uses he like uses uh stones to help anchor himself and like block the waves so that he can actually get across and uh eventually kill Galp. <laughs> that seems fair. <laughs> that seems fair in this situation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, someone if someone tried to pee into a river to drown me, I think I think I also would would have to resort to violence. Yeah. And that's Vimir River. <laughs> Got a name just so we can tell a story about this one time this giantess tried to drown Thor in urine. Yep. Yep. And then the final location. Final location. Is Uthgard. Hey, Uthgard! A Loki lives there. Yeah, yeah, Uthgard Loki lives there. And Thor, on his way there to, for the life of me, I can't, we'll get into into all of Thor's reasonings and goals Mm -hmm. in the Thor episode. Yep. But we're not here to talk about Thor. We're here to talk about Jotunheim. Yes. Who Thor has a lot to do with. (laughs) Yeah. Earlier, you were telling me that it does seem like 90% of when Jotunheim is mentioned is just because Thor is doing a thing there. Yeah. Okay. Thor had an adventure. (laughs) It couldn't happen in Midgard because we know everything in Midgard. This is the normal place where everything lives and is our civilization. So in order for Thor to have adventures, it has to be in Jotunheim. Yep. And so he's just traveling around Jotunheim. He meets a giant called Skrimir. Okay. And this giant Skrimir is, uh, what is it? He's just unfathomably large. Yeah. His food bag is so massive that Thor cannot untie it. Is he trying to rob him? No, because he he, uh, he started to like travel with him for a little bit. Uh, and so he's like, let's combine our food rations. And so he puts his food rations into Skrimir's bag. 
And Skrimir's like, all right, I'm going to go like lay down for a bit. You keep watching, help yourself to food, like make some food. He's like, yeah, okay. And Thor can't for the life of him untie this fucking bag. <laughs> he is trying so hard. I thought this was a, was it a trick? Or was He's it? trying so hard yeah. to untie this bag. Uh-huh. Eventually he goes and he's like, he's he starts to try to kill Skrimir. <laughs> like that's going to open the bag faster? Yeah, I don't know. He he goes up to Skrimir's forehead. He's like, all right, I'm going to hit him. And so he hits him on the forehead with his hammer as hard as he can. And Skrimir wakes up. He's like, did, did like a leaf just fall on me? Oh, Thor, what's good? You get like food? You're ready to settle down? And Thor's like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to go to bed here shortly. Uh, it's like, all right, all right, wonderful. And so he lies down, goes back to sleep. Once they'll realize that he gets back up on him, he's like, all right, let's try it again. And he fucking slams, <laughs> tries to kill him again. And every time like, a squirrel must have just dropped an acorn on me. What's, what? oh, Thor, what's up? We're almost ready to go. It's like, no, just a little longer. He's like, you continue rest. He's like, yeah, okay, cool. He goes back to sleep and Thor's like, this motherfucker. And so he like really winds up and tries his best to do it. And he slams like, oh, dude, a stick must have just like walked me on the head a little bit. Oh, oh, Thor, what's good? Oh, look, the sun's coming up. Let's let's go ahead and continue our adventure. They go a little bit. And he's like, all right, I'm out. Utgard Castle is like right up that way. Be careful because, you know, Utgard Loki is kind of like a he's not that great of a man. And so he like okay. he walks off and Thor's like, OK, whatever. <laughs> Fine. I guess that's the end of this encounter. Yeah. So he never got his food back. No, I, I assume at some point. Because I didn't read him getting his feedback, but I imagine it was like an off-screen thing. <laughs> I'm also wondering whether it was a con to steal Thor's yeah, food. Right? <laughs> so he ends up in Utgard uh, Loki's castle. Utgard Loki's like, oh, great. The mighty Thor is here. Uh-huh. And Thor's uh, Utgard's like, you will have to, in order this, to get charity, yes, there's the contest. Yeah, the contest. And we talked about one of the ones where he's like almost tricked into lifting the world serpent. Yeah. Almost tricked into the lifting the world serpent is funny. He lifts the world serpent up to the sky. When? That that's that's what Utgard Loki tells him after when he's like revealing all the tricks that he um, did. He's like, "Yeah, dude, we were worried because you did lift him up to the sky." Right, right. He he couldn't lift the cat, but he in actuality was lifting the world. the world serpent up to the sky. <laughs> As I said, cat, my cat literally leaned so far like she was like, me? But no, she was just losing her balance. Uh, yeah. But all of the contests in order is Loki steps up. He's like, I can eat faster than anybody. Wait, Loki, Loki or Utah Loki? Loki, Loki. What? Loki's here? So Loki, Thor, Thialfi. Okay. And one other girl. I don't remember her name. Uh-huh. Are there. The girl does not participate. Okay. Couldn't tell you why. She just doesn't. But yeah, Loki ste- steps up. He's like, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do it. I'll, I can eat faster than anybody here. And Ukai Loki's like, great. Uh, here's Logi. L-O-G-I. <laughs> he, he'll be your, he'll be your uh, opponent. And Loki's like, cool. And so like they bring out this big, long trough. And Loki goes and he starts eating. Wait, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is Thor not participating in this contest? Not this one. Okay. But wait, wait, wait. Is there th- are five different uh, things that happen. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just, I just, I had, you know, I'm coming with some preconceived notions and I'm, I'm realizing that's incorrect. I'm just shocked that Loki was here. And also, was he hanging out with Thor this whole time? Yeah. Oh. He's been traveling with Thor for a bit. Oh, okay. That's what it threw They've me. I thought Loki out, yeah. was just at the party. And I'm like, why is he competing? No, no. Oh. He's been traveling with Thor. Yeah. Sorry. This is this. Okay. That this is the scene from the Magnus books. Yes. Okay. Go on. So Loki, he's like, he's consuming the meat real quick. He's just eating everything. But, but Logi is in fact eating the food, the bones, oh, no. and even the trough. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. It's crazy. That's Nathan's hot dog eating contest a lot. Right? It's crazy. Yeah. So Lo- uh, Utgard Loki was like, yeah, you just couldn't eat more or uh, faster than Logi. You hate to see it. The Alfie steps was like, I can run faster than anybody here. Uh-huh. And so Utgard is like, okay, how about you try to run against Hoogie? And so Hoogie steps up uh-huh. and is just quicker than a whip. Okay. Just so fast. Before uh, Thialfi could get like a quarter of the way, he's already done and almost back. Like it's, it's, it's bad. It's not even close. It's not even close. They it's do like three that, different that ones. It's like the Olympics this year where everyone was like a hundred meters back from the, the winning runner. Yeah. And they were... Uh, 
they did three different uh, tries, and it was just worse and worse every time. Okay. Really hate to see it. Thor then steps up and says he could outdrink any man, or he could outdrink anyone. Uh huh. And so Utgard's like, all right, well, here's a goblet or like a horn that, like, it, like it's impressive if you can do it in one. Everyone here can do it in two. And if it takes you more than three, then you're you're a chump. You're a punk. He's like Thor's like, okay, let me give it a try. And he starts to drink and drink. He's this big old massive gulp. And then he puts it down and like just barely any has come out of that <laughs> horn. And he's like, Whoa. and Utgard Loki's just like taunting him this whole time. And he uh-huh. takes another big old drink and he just like just trying to get it down. And he puts it and even less is gone. And Utgard's like, well, if you can't do it this next time, then you're just, you know. You're not as good as anybody else. You're just a bitch. Thor's like, and he takes the biggest gulp he can and just like, yeah, again, just a little bit gets reduced. Uh, and then we get, and Ukko looks like, oh, you hate to see it, dude. <laughs> Rough. And Thor's like, well, I can lift anything. He's like, why don't you give that cat over there a try? <laughs> and the cat is Jormungandr. Could yep. barely get it off, uh, get one paw up. And well, yep. And the cat, Thor's like... Fuck, what the hell is this shit all about? <laughs> I think it's a gray cat, too, if I remember correctly. Something like that, yeah. I'm just looking at my gray cat hanging out in the bed. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, cat. And Thor refuses to admit defeat. He's like, well, I can wrestle anybody here. And he's like, all right, well, let's go up, up against uh, Ellie over there. Uh-huh. And it's just like this old woman, <laughs> right? And he struggles. I think he manages to get Ellie... No, Ellie manages to get Thor down on one knee, but n- no further. Okay. And... Come to find out, obviously, all of this is a trick. Yeah. All of it. Even Scrimmier. Scrimmier was a trick. It was Utgard Loki the whole time. The whole time? The, the bag was wrapped in iron wire. <gasps> and every time he got struck in the forehead, he actually had pulled a mountain to take the shot <laughs> for him. Leading up to the castle, there were three flattened mountains. <laughs> it's like, I'd have died if he actually hit me, bro. That was that was horrifying. It was scary. Like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Here's the thing. I obviously knew it was all tricks because I, like, read the Magnus yeah. book. I did not think... That the first guy was also part of the trick. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely all. It was all part of the tricks. <laughs> I think the bag is kind of implied. Oh, that's so fucking good. Okay, okay. So the first thing was all mountains, and there was uh, there was. See, he doesn't get his food back. It was a con the whole time. Yeah, but he was treated well after the competition. Yeah, right? he was like he got the well. hospitality. He got the hospitality. He got like a bunch of like he got served well, drinks all around. Every it was a big old party. Uh-huh. And in the morning, Utgard was walking about. Was like, all right, it was all a trick, Loki. That was actually fire. It was just burning everything away. Oh <laughs> it was I knew burning. It had to be something. But yeah, uh, Loki was just fire, just outright fire, That's just burning so... and eating all of that. You'd like, Loki was impressive. Yeah, he definitely would eat. Like, I'd eaten anybody in that building, but it's fire. <laughs> Can't out eat fire. Uh, Hoogie, the runner, uh-huh. was actually Utgard Loki's mind, which is just quick. Quick. You cannot, no, can't like, no man can outrun a. Like, yeah. The horn. The other end of it was attached to the ocean. I was wondering if it was the ocean. That one I was like, I think it's the ocean. It was the ocean. Uh-huh. And Ukar's like, you drink a lot. Go back to your ocean. It's down. Like, the level has reduced. You <laughs> like you're, It was impressive <laughs> what you did. Dude. Oh, no. There are some ecological disasters happening It is absolutely. Because right you took you three ruined, massive gulps. You ruined some, like, port cities. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. <laughs> the fish flop, flop, flop. They're just shit. You drank so much. Uh, and then the cat was Jorman Gunder and as Hootgard look as I said. He's like, Yeah, you we were actually worried. You not sp- you don't ever come back here. We'll like we don't want you to do that again. Don't come you back. lift him you lifted him up to the sky. We were scared. You almost woke the damn thing up. <laughs> Winter Loki, you did this. Yeah, right. And uh Ellie was old age. Okay, I when I, I was like, I think I know this one. Yeah. Old age. Ellie was old age. Was, and he's like, it was Rick, impressive that like you. Hey, was Rick Riordan doing a doing a Norse mythology yeah, reference probably. in? Almost certainly. Oh wait, doesn't Hercules wrestle him? That Gary actually. True, guy? actually, yeah. I think it's a Hercules thing. Okay, it could be both. You don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't. And I know Rick did a lot, but he also did bases Freya but it's off also... of this hit piece, so I don't okay, know anymore. Right? But yeah, he in Utgard was like, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy that you actually managed to stand up for that long and only got down on one knee. Like it's impressive. Not many people can do that. Don't ever come back here. Don't come back. <laughs> we don't we don't want you here. You almost ruined like the world. <laughs> we don't want to hang out with you anymore. It's like 
Which I look at you did this. You're absolutely incredible. You scared me. <laughs> yeah. Was he really just testing to see what Thor was truly capable of? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. And he's like, oh, that's fucking terrible. You almost killed me Don't three times. Back. I ran out of mountains. I'm glad you didn't try to do a four. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look, the sun's up. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, it's not. And it's just like that scene from Hocus Pocus. Like there's some other giants and they're just faking a sunrise yeah, right. to get him out of there. <laughs> this, that's incredible. Just the, just, I'm just trying to picture, because I took such delight in that story. And I knew the twist of Uttar Loki. But even then... It was delightful. Just imagine being a Nordic person. And, and seeing the, the bard... oceans just. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember like hearing the story <laughs> yeah, yeah. from a bard and being like, what? And it was a trip. Thor's incredible. Like, this is, this is like. Yeah, looking a... at, looking like they're doing it like on a beach and they look at the vastness of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. It's like, he drank that much. Or you're sitting around a fire and you Not even throwing... a boat changes out of the way this shit looks. Yeah. As you're telling the story and you're mentioning it's fire, you're like throwing bones and stuff yeah. into the fire. Like, yeah. It, it. I'm trying to figure out what the story is for, you know, because it's not just meant to entertain. They all It's a mythology, which means it was part of a living religious tradition and it does things. And so I've equated it in my head with the book of Genesis, <laughs> which the book of Genesis, the first book. Just to show how incredible God is. It's just to show how God is better than all of these pagan deities all around. Like that's what the book of Genesis is for. Yeah. It's to be like, our God is an awesome God. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is supposed to do like the same thing, but for Thor, you listen, you know Thor is strong. He protects Midgard. He fights monsters and giants. But did you know that he can drink the ocean? He lifted the world serpent and he can wrestle against old age and only be forced to go down on one knee. Yeah, And that's pretty cool. That's actually like, yeah, Thor's so cool. Yeah, it's great. That's why we named so many things after him. Yep. There's something I did forget to do with the start of this. Oh, yeah? What do you remember about Jotunheim from the book? <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was totally I did forgot. I did clock. I was trying to figure out how to like do it, but you, we went right in and I was letting you... I was letting you the ship. So, things we talked about Jotunheim, it's where the... I thought frost giants live. <laughs> um, Super cold. Like... Like a ski lodge in the middle of January, mm -hmm. cold, but also maybe frigid death cold. I think they hike through Jotunheim into Niflheim because Scotty's place sure. is cold, but it's past that where it becomes we're gonna truly die. Yeah, like cold. this was like death cold in that. Yeah. It wasn't quite maybe it's because like Jotunheim's winter also lines up with. Midgard's winter, and they were no, they were doing it in the summer. Yeah, it was summer. Maybe they, maybe it lines up with the summer. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because Percy came to hang out. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's fucking weird. Can't can't. Very strange. It. Super cold. I thought, <laughs> and it's where the giants live. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I know about Jotunheim. <laughs> It's kind of all there was in the books. Yeah. What was Sam's quest in Jotunheim? Right. Sam went to kill that, uh, not kill the rooster. Sam went to check and make sure that the rag, one of the three Ragnarok roosters was still, hadn't hatched yet. Yes. And so there was that giant with the magical heart. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't remember it. I forgot. I was like, I'm, I'll read it. I'm like, no, I'll listen to it at work. And then I totally forgot. <laughs> no, here's the thing. I was sitting here trying to remember like, wait, who does what in Jotunheim and nine from the nine. So I'm I glad did, you remembered I did it look Sam. At, I did look to see like, like, well, who was it? It was Sam. Great. Great. I'm oh, sure yeah, Darren Sam. would love to tell me about it. <laughs> I would love to tell you about it. That was the whole thing. Um, Sam does some cool math to try to get, it's honestly like my least favorite story. That one, and it. then I found uh, uh, Blitzes to also be just like kind of whatever. Yeah, you hate to see it. Uh... Listen, it's hard to compare with Hearths is fucking brilliant, and uh, Amir's is an existential nightmare. <laughs> I feel so bad for Amir. I feel so bad for Amir. <laughs> you can't just talk to a therapist about this. No, I, no therapist is going to believe you. <laughs> uh, what is it? And what do you remember about Utgard Loki? He is a giant yep. who is very into illusion. Yeah. I was going to say he can shapeshift because the first time we see him, he's a big old bird and he swoops Magnus away and he's like, oh yeah, he is like, get me an apple. I want an apple or I'm going to drop you. <laughs> Come do me a favor. 
But also when we learn more about Illusion, you do got to wonder whether he was actually, were you a bird or did you have a jetpack and you were pretending you were a bird? Because it's cooler than this goofy jetpack. Yeah. Like, can you just fly, but you pretend to turn it? Were you not flying at all? Were you in a helicopter this whole time? You also got to wonder, like, I mean, how real are his illusions? That's the other thing where it's like, that's. Because he, he opened up a whole ass portal. That <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is like so. The other thing is like the the scene that you just like the story of Thor we just got. Yeah, Rick redoes that one in the. Except Hearth doesn't face like any illusion. <laughs> no, they they all. Yeah, they don't have the only illusion. one. Who, the I want the only ones who actually face an illusion is in fact, uh, Magnus and. Uh... Alex. Alex. Yeah. Yeah. They're the because, only ones who face an illusion. Because <laughs> Blitz just has to make someone up and everyone agrees he does a great job. Yeah. Hearth, can, he's like, I can beat you at any game. And he's a literal pinball wizard. So yeah. like, yes. He's like, I'll beat you at any game. But like, we don't have to play the same game. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's like, I never said it was the same game. And he just like, we have to unplug the machine. Please stop. You win. And then. Like, I get it. You, you got a billion points. Crazy. <laughs> Samira, a... she has a, they try to do an illusion on her. She calls out. Oh, right. She, she calls it like immediately and kills the child. <laughs> yeah. She's like, that wasn't a child though. That was something else. Yeah. So she, cause she calls it, but yeah, so it is, it, it's uh, like. It was someone who never misses. Yeah. I remember. So yeah, the other two don't have illusions. They just do their thing and they yeah. just, they just outsmart them. I guess. I don't know. They just get to show it's off like, how cool they are. what illusion do we do here? We can make him look ugly, but that's rude to this man's craft. <laughs> yeah. It's like, God, oh, he's so good at it. We were trying to illusion. Maybe they thought, well, we'll just outplay him at the game. Ah, shit. He went second and is playing pinball now. We yeah, can't illusion it. our way out of pinball. Damn. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's fun. It's also funny because, like, no one else wins. In the, in the actual story, no one wins. No one won. they're all illusions, and you find yeah. out it was all a trick after the fact. Yeah, and it's not like, but it's also not like it was like life or death, and nobody chased after them after that. Yeah, it was just for funsies. Yeah, and then, it was like, yeah. yeah, we're just like fucking with you, but don't ever come back. You scared us. Yeah. And it's interesting because it's, it's very different because they're trying to show off and get the trust of the giants to get the thing they want. Yeah. And Thor's just like, I'm here to hang out, I guess. He's he's on a quest right now. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, he is on a quest. This is a pit stop. And this was a pit stop. Okay. Yeah. Just a place to bunk up for the night. Yep. So, yeah, you mentioned like, how real are the illusions. And it feels like the bowling thing is different than what Uttard Loki did in the myth. Yeah. Where he did just use an illusion to hide what something really was. Yeah. But it was... I mean, he technically still hid the fact that this was a freeway and not a bowling lane, like the goblet. The oh. goblet was the ocean and not a goblet. Oh. Right? Okay. But it was a bowling lane. It, it was a bowling lane, but it there was, was a, also a freeway. That wasn't a freeway. They, yeah, there were... He says that last one, you bowled it down the I-90 and it went right past the Taco Bell on one of them. Oh, I thought... I thought it was portals. It was technically, but it was also like something that was there that wasn't. It was the mountain range. Yeah. The Appalachian Mountains, I think. Yeah. And yeah, it, but it's still, it's not like, it was still like the thing. Yeah. That one I felt, I always felt like that. It was funky. But it's, yeah, it's also it hard funky. to wrap your mind around when you also describe something as impossibly large. No, I can do that. I can't. Just impossibly large we made it look like a cat <laughs> attached the end of the i'm not even talking about i'm talking about the the giants oh, tiny the giants. was a big fuck off right, giant right, right i thought we were just talking about the the cat and the... no i can imagine something Are wrapping the giants around the actually that big if it, it feels like rick riordan speaking of what i know about you illusions probably... but they also could be very much that big like it all do illusion know. here's the thing so rick riordan has spread the thing like all giants can do illusion and it does sound like it's just utard loki can do illusion yeah probably and they all just make themselves crazy big, but they're not crazy. Okay, maybe but the other, maybe the other they thing... can do like only size illusions. Yeah, and not not the crazy shit that Ukard Loki can do. Yeah, he's just very good. Yeah. He's very good at it. I also the the giantess that tried to drown Thor. Mm-hmm. She had to be crazy big. She was large. Yeah, the giants are crazy big. Yeah. But also Rick Ryden says sometimes it's just an illusion. Yeah. I feel like... I, I feel like Rick is like... I feel like Rick toes the line is like, is it just an illusion? 
Yeah. Because is there size? Because we know he was it Ukard Loki shrank the whole building yeah. down in order for these people to participate in these games. But you have to wonder whether the things being big in the first place was just an illusion to fuck with them. Well, I mean, the outside was big, and they're also called giants. They're yeah. So giant. So how big? That's the thing. How big is a giant? Because the giant that was going to drown Thor had to be very, very Had to be large in order to be able to piss fast enough to try to drown Thor. In a river. Yeah. What was the name of the river again? Vimir River. Vimir River. DJ did not have to look at his notes for that one. So everyone is that big at Utard Loki's party? I imagine, right? I can't. You're right. I can't imagine. (laughs) I changed my mind. I revoke. I can't imagine. It's fucking wild. Yeah, very large. Okay. All right, so we got Scotty. We got the four name places in Jotunheim. We had Utard Loki and his wild ass party. Mm-hmm. That's well, it. That's... I mean, I mean, that's those are the major events of Jotunheim. The uh-huh. rest of it is really just like Thor is traveling about doing things to people. Mm-hmm. And I figured we'll talk about that when we get to the Thor episode. Yeah. So we, we marked another thing off that list: Utard, Lo- Utard Loki's crazy party. Hey, why is he called that? Do you know? Uh, the name of the castle is Utgard. Uh, he might, it might just be Castle Loki. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I didn't see any like sound, uh, what is it? Any reason in the Eddas around that in those stories? Yeah. Right. Hold on. I'm actively Googling it. Okay. And... Cause that, now I gotta know. Maybe it's, uh, cause like Loki is a master illusionist. So when people are describing it, it's like, yeah, it's Loki of Utgard. All right. So the, Utgard, Utgarda, it means of the Outlands? So his name is Loki of the Outlands. Ah. And it is, he's referred to that to distinguish him from Loki, who's (laughs) Thor's buddy. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Why? No, no, I refuse to just be like, (laughs) that's it. But that seems to be it. And the one time he's mentioned is at this party where he fucks with Thor. Yep. That's so interesting. Another thing where you'd expect, oh, this guy must be such an important character in Norse mythology. Nah. No, just like he's not Technically, really... Technically, I guess, yeah, but also it's he's about as important as Medusa. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it, when reading, it's funny because I was like, well, he appears so often in the Magnus books, but also simultaneously, you could cut him out of the Magnus books and it's the same. I, don't, I mean, yeah, it's because Magnus it's doesn't fucking listen to him. <laughs> listen, it's fun. He's fun. I like his scenes. Yeah. But like... In terms of, I was like, oh, he's so important because he's so important in the Magnus books. Well, I mean, he's around a lot. Yeah. So... He does tell them to go uh, something about the apple. I don't remember. Or something after they give him the apple. Yeah, he tries. Yeah, I don't really remember that. Tells him something specific. I don't exactly remember. Is he the one that tells him to go find the the blood sword? Uh, he says, don't go there. That's right. He does he's try like, to don't give... fucking do that. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. Um. He's... I, but the thing, are there, how many Lokis are running around? Probably a lot. Okay, that's the thing I'll get into in the Loki episode. Because I'm sitting here being like, <laughs> his name, his name just means, oh yeah, you call him Utard Loki to distinguish him from other Loki who's also in this story. And you're just like, but why is he called that? I wonder if Loki just means trickster. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in the Loki episode. Because I'm just like, but it's got to be a reason. I don't have a reason. There's not one. Okay. Neat. Mythology's weird. It says it means lock in Norse. Listen, there are two Judases. <laughs> so, like, I can't get upset at this Loki, Utard Loki thing. Yeah. It's not isolated to Norse mythology. <laughs> are there two Judases? Are there two Judases, Darian? I might be thinking of a weapon. I'm sure there are several Johns. You know what? I'm actually... Right, there are... Because then we have John the Baptist. Exactly. And that specifies who this is. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure if there are several Johns or if there's just John the Baptist. Uh, I mean, the, what is it? I'm sure there is a John disciple. Yeah, that's John the is Baptist. Is that John the Baptist? Yeah. Okay, so Judas, there are several Judases or Jude. Cool. And, and, D, and Jesus did have two disciples named Judas. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So how about that? All right. All right. So frost giants are not a thing. They're just giants. Frost giants 
could be a thing, but Jotunheim Giants are not Frost Giants. Not Frost Giants. They're just Giants. Yep. They're good at illusion, or the very least, Uttard Loki is. Yes. And this is just the place where Thor went on some adventures. Yeah. Did anyone else do anything? Oh, Odin did at Mimir's Ball. Odin did. Skirnir did. That was the that was Frey's. Right. He went to go get the giant chick to agree to to fuck Frey. Yeah. And God, what the f- uh Gerod? Gerod? Yes. He did. Who's that? Good God, who was Gerod? Oh, he's a Jotun, so of course he did shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was the father of he was the father of Galp. <laughs> hey, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, of course. Hey, so, um, DJ, thank you for taking me on this adventure through Jotunheim. Yeah, of course. You got any examples of Jotunheim throughout, uh... Honestly, just Thor. And yeah. just, and honestly, specifically, just the first Thor movie? Where Thor goes out go... there with his friends just to, like, start I was about to say, I don't think they ever go back, but that is because Loki did destroy it. Yeah. It <laughs> got destroyed at the end of that fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we never see Yoda again. We see it again. I do. I think maybe he's just destroyed. Yeah. Maybe just destroyed. Have no evidence of the contrary. Damaged to the point where it collapsed in on itself, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Asgard at the end of Thor Ragnarok. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, it's, and as we talked about, it's just an icy, barren scape. Just like a dead ice planet. Yeah. Or maybe it, not. We're just seeing this one area with, I mean, it's mostly ice and some frozen. Yeah, it's like I, ice cliffs and it's like, it seems like it's a whole big glacier because even like the, it's not like we see any rocks. It's all yeah. literally just solid ice. ice. How do you live here? They're frost giants. I don't know. I guess. What are you eating? They're frost giants. No, so nothing? Is it, all, is it all an illusion? <laughs> You're just eating ice. <laughs> And then, Lu- and then Loki's great at illusion. Yeah. Magic in in uh, the Marvel comics. And I actually don't know if that's a thing for Loki Loki. If he's good in illusion or if he's he just- He can turn into a falcon at least. That's he did that for illusion. Dune. Well, he shapeshifts, but he used Freya's cloak to do that. Hmm. He turns into a horse. He can turn into things. Yeah. That's not necessarily illusion magic, though. Does it not count as illusion school in Dungeons and Dragons? Is mm. shapeshifting not illusion school? No, it's transfiguration. Mm, you're right. That's a different school of magic. If you're, if it, if you're physically actually changing into the thing, it's not an illusion. It's transfiguration. Mm, if you are presenting an image as if you had transformed, then it is illusion. If it's what Gus does in the Owl House, that's illusion magic. I don't know that reference. Yeah, I know you didn't. I made it for ten. <laughs> and all right, DJ, what about you? You talked about Scotty a little bit in Smite. Is Utard Loki in Smite? <laughs> no, he's not. I think he'd be really fun in Smite. He'd I bet be, cool. he'd be cool. I wonder what he would do. What would if you were if you were tasked with putting him in Spite? What kind of character would he be? Probably. I was gonna say Mage, but in Smite too. There's not. Really, they're trying to get away from that more class based thing. Interesting. Yeah. Right. If you're gonna put them in Smite too, I forgot. Well, that's because new gods aren't coming to Smite anymore. <laughs> no, that makes sense. But I, no, I, I said I genuinely yeah, yeah. forgot about Smite too. Yeah. Probably have him be a little more of probably an illusionary based tank. That'd be kind of fun. Oh yeah, that would be kind of fun. I like that. I'm trying to throw up different like good. tricks of sorts. Yeah. I couldn't tell you any of his uh, moves or anything. Like I'm not that creative. Uh, <laughs> I feel like you would be able to pull mountains as like a shield. Ah, uh, but Amir does that. He raises up an ice wall. You're saying no two characters in Smite have similar move sets? No two characters summon walls like that. <laughs> okay, but like, okay, fine. But do any two characters have similar sets at all? I'm not saying it's he. They both share, but the one the this closest one thing. thing I could think is what is it? Apwash with his corpses and corpse explosion, uh-huh. and Nuwa with her stone soldiers, and she can make those explode. 
Okay, so you would have two things that do a similar. similar you're, yeah. you're right. Yeah, Ice War as a shield is basically just mountain reskin. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about Jotunheim? You encountered Jotunheim in anything? Mm, nothing that I personally have seen because I've not played enough of God of War or Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah, here's a big problem. Remember, <laughs> you said you were so excited to play. I was, and then I just didn't. <laughs> You also had your eye injury. I got my eye injury, uh, and then I just, I don't know, I've never gotten around to it. I just, I'm not super interested in God of War's play style. Oh, uh, is that what Which it is, is a real big bummer. <laughs> we should get guests on that have played these games. Right. Well, yes. Hey, <laughs> what guests can record in these weird times we're suddenly only able to record between your work schedule and my work I schedule? I know, Crazy. So, dear listeners, if you've played God of War and Assassin's Creed Valhalla and have big feelings about Jotunheim or any of the giants in those, you should tell us all about it. Pretty please. Educate us. Educate all the listeners. I'd love I'd love to hear your thoughts on, like, because I, I looked at pictures. It's even in um, that VR game that I've been meaning also to get around to, uh, Asgard's Wrath. And it's pretty jungly in that game, actually. <laughs> it's not, not really cold. More like jungle-based. Which was a very interesting choice. Well, I figured when you're the things you were describing of like Thor traveling and being in none of those things necessitated mm-hmm. cold. Yeah, none of them necessitate cold. I, I they were just mountains and I, river. I'm, I bet there is a description of it, but again, when I flip through all of the references to it, yeah, there's no uh, there's no real description. Of Jotunheim, as That's I so said, I flipped through and all I saw for Jotunheim was. Thor's adventures and people from Jotunheim. And I wonder if it's like, oh, they associate, oh, because Scotty is a giantess and she is from Jotunheim and she's associated with skiing. Therefore, it must all be snowy. But it's also like, if you take that, but it's, you're like, well, they're also in Scandinavia. It must all be snowy regardless, right? Yeah. Aside from what's specifically called out as not snowy. Yeah. And I and I think that's even not true. I'm like, yeah, Scandinavia is pretty far up north and I bet they have like winters and there are snow, but I bet it's not snowy everywhere all the time yeah i mean they have gods of spring yeah so like jotunheim probably isn't just like snowy bogus basin in the middle yeah. of january bogus basin is a local ski resort it's listeners. just not like northern alaska constantly <laughs> yeah it's just a wilderness yeah it's a, which is exactly what it is it's if midgard is civilization jotunheim is the wilderness that's why thor goes there to adventure and you don't Thor, adventure in civilization. To specific, also specifically, Thor crosses an ocean to get to Jotunheim. Does he? Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. And as I said, Jotunheim is actually a valley in Norway. Yeah, I thought it was mountain range. I, uh, maybe it's a mountain range. Either way, the pick I saw, it's also like the area of it is small. Hmm. But it's gorgeous. Oh, it is. He's a, God damn it. How about you, Jotunheimen? National Park. It's a national park. Wow. That's so pretty. Welcome to Loam and Jotunheim. Damn. Look at that. That is some blue ass water. Mm-hmm. Look this bit. Look, Google it. Listeners, Google it. It's a very Incredible. beautiful location. And also, not all covered in snow. No. Yep. Yeah. And uh was it there? Sorry. A map for it, and so when you look at it, when it's on all of uh, Norway, it's not that big. I, I said mountain range. I think it really is more of just that valley area. It's the park area. Yeah, because a mountain range would be a lot bigger than that. <laughs> the Scandinavian countries are so bizarre. Why are they shaped this way? I don't know. Maybe they're, is... maybe they're in mountain ranges, right? Like, that's why Idaho and Montana are shaped like that. That's true. Montana not... used to be part of Idaho. <laughs> It did. And then they, the officials like, we fucking hate crossing this goddamn mountain range. We're done. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we're not going to do it anymore. Right. Two different states. You're right. Europe just looks like that. Europe just looks like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you get to the part of like the past New England, East Coast, United States, and then you just have longer, It's like, oh, fuck, lines. we got a lot of room here. <laughs> just lines. God, there's one state that's shaped like a, like a rectangle. There are two states. <laughs> Wyoming? Colorado and Wyoming. Yeah. Oh, forget about Wyoming. Wyoming's also part of the um, Pride Federal Foundation. Yeah, yeah. It's considered one of those states. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's it's so. I love it. I love it so much when it really is just like 
I saw somebody describe it as the United States looks like it was actually settled from west to east and like the way that you would write like a big happy birthday card. Oh, and you just start like, oh, yeah, I got so much space here. It's like, oh, wait, hold on. I got to get 50 of these. You have to put 48 in this space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then except it's the other way around. And it really is just like. After the Appalachians, like, wow, there's so much fucking space over here, dude. Look, whoa! <laughs> Is anyone out there? No, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. <laughs> they don't got guns. <laughs> Jotunheim! <laughs> Jotunheim, everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs> yeah, usually thanks for taking over the, the research on this one. This yeah, one of is course. fun. I, liked, I actually did like reading the... Uh, Utgard Loki story a lot. It was really so glad funny. this was. I I totally spaced that Utgard Loki would be in this one, and it yeah, it feels like yeah. DJ should tell me this story. This was great. Thanks. It was so really much. cool. All right. Oh, what are we doing next time? What are we doing next time, man? Well, Is it know. Thor? It's not. It's Damn. definitely not Thor. Um. Well, here's the thing. I didn't do the notes, so I don't have the bottom of my notes where I write the thing mm, we do fair next enough. time. So I get a pass. No, you this do. This time. We will be back in your ears on Tuesday, October 8th to talk about, okay, Nidavellir, Alfheim, and Svartalheim. Svartalheim? Svartalheim. Dwarves, elves, and dark elves. <laughs> nice. And until then, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Muses of Mythology is created and hosted by Darren and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darren Smart. The show is produced by Darren and DJ Smart, as well as Tim O'Connor, The Crystal Conman, Nicholas Miller. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hayne, and our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her at on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Want more Muses and Mythology? Support the show on Patreon. Just one dollar gets you exclusive bonus content. Get more at patreon.com forward slash Muses of Mythology. You can also support the show by leaving a review at lovethepodcast.com forward slash Muses of Mythology. Or tell a friend why you love the show. Don't forget to check out all of our episodes and episode transcripts at musicmythology.com. Thanks for listening.